Hey everyone, welcome to today's The Study Trader YouTube Live. We're doing this one live for the past few days. We've kind of been recording them a little beforehand. Um, well, today is, uh, is part two of our options series where yesterday we talked about using leverage or options for leverage and sort of the risks for that. I gave you a, a few, uh, I think, pretty good tips. Today we're going to talk about using options for hedging and over the place. When well, maybe instead of selling those stocks, and you're anticipating a pullback in the market, or maybe you're going on vacation or something, instead of selling all those stocks, you can just buy a few protective puts or a few put spreads, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So that's the basic idea of hedging. Um, you can also hedge out, you know, like a, a temporary, um, a, you know, sort of a news headline. Maybe you don't want to sell your stocks over, uh, you know, whatever the news might be. Maybe it's a major geopolitical uncertainty or whatever. Um, so that's number one. Number two, what I think is important is to understand that a hedge is, in my opinion, it's not a trade. What does that mean? Well, a lot of people will say, listen, I'm going to buy some puts here in the S&P 500 uh, because I think the market's going to go down. And they might think that's a hedge, but they start they treat it more as a trade. And as soon as you start merging those two ideas, you start completely missing the point of the hedge which the hedge is kind of to, to ride your portfolio through the uncertainty. And it's not to make a quick buck on, uh, on sort of an, on, on, on an un, uncertain event. So anyway, that's the, um, uh, that's the basics here. Let's look at the computer for a minute and I'll show you guys a couple more things here that I think are important. So um, what are the instruments that we like to use for, uh, for the purposes of, uh, of hedging? And you know what? My camera is very dirty. I need to there you go. I think it's a little bit better now. Anyway, um, the two instruments I like to use for, for U.S. equity exposure, for the most part, is either the S&P 500, the SPY ETF, uh, or the, um, it's still dirty, uh, or the, um, the Russell 2000, or even the NASDAQ 100 ETF. So let's assume you have a portfolio that's made up of a whole bunch of stocks that's kind of all over the place. And what, what I'd like to do, I'll just probably just buy some, some puts or put spreads in the S&P 500. I'll use options that expire at least a month or, uh, or two months out in the future. So like right now it's mid-June 2018 and I would probably look to at least use August options again because I'm not trying to, to immediately gratify for, I'm not trying to do a trade for immediate gratification. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do a trade to hedge my portfolio, right? So I'm looking to probably use the monthly options using August, what strikes am I going to use? I'm probably going to use at the money. So like right now, um, uh, the S&P 500 is trading or the SPY ETF is trading around uh, around uh, 278. So I'd probably just literally just go ahead and use a 278 strike August put or a put spread, which means what I would do is I would look to see if I think the S&P is going to drop, say, a percent or two. I would then use the lower strike, the one I'm going to uh, uh, the one I'm going to sell against the strike I'm putting as our as as the, the one I'm I'm selling if that makes sense. Now, what happens if your portfolio is a little bit more concentrated in a different area? So maybe your portfolio is much more uh, technology heavy, right? So maybe you all you own in your portfolio is Apple and Google and Netflix. God forbid that's your entire portfolio. Um, but let's assume that's the case. Well, then you don't necessarily need to use the S&P. Maybe then you use something like the NASDAQ 100 to hedge out some risk. Um, what if your portfolio is more small cap oriented? Then maybe you want to use uh, the Russell 2000. So uh, again, I would say the two main takeaways here are number one, uh, don't trade. Uh, don't use a hedge as a trade. Don't mistake those two things because a lot of times, like I said before, what's going to happen if you, if you use the hedge as a trade, or if you start thinking of it as a trade, you'll, you'll tend to exit too early and kind of forget about the whole situation. Um, also, you know, I'm a big fan of using this strategy, but I will tell you that a lot of people, once they get into the hedging business, they start overthinking things. And I think it's important to keep it simple and clean, either by a put or a put spread. Uh, you know, it's really that as far as, as far as I'm going, is that, is that simple? And also, um, make sure you don't do it too often because there's always some reason to be afraid of something every day, right? 
So make sure you really lose it, use it sparingly. It's, you know, the other way of hedging is just to reduce your portfolio size or reduce certain things in your portfolio. So I think hedging is a great thing to do. Um, but again, make sure you use it really only in situations where there is actual risk out there. Um, and a lot of times you can kind of look at the VIX, for example, to see uh, what the anticipated risk in the market is. So like the VIX at 12 doesn't really spell a lot of fear. So anyway, folks, I hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys tomorrow in our third part for the video series. Oh, one more thing I need to ask you. Um, we're looking to do our next um, mastermind workshop. These are the in-person events and I'm looking for feedback as to what location you would like us to visit next. Right now we're considering Denver and maybe San Diego and um, London. Uh, let us know in the comment section down below or you can always send us an email at support at the sedentary.com. We're looking to make uh, do a next event in August and then every month for the rest of the year. Let us know what, what the location you'd like to come to. They're usually two and a half day events um, in the comment down below and then we will uh, take into consideration. Take care.